Okay, here we go. And I am going to share. All right, so we all see this, yes? Yep. Cool. So I'm Don Doherty. Say hello to Dan and Joel. And Hi, Joel. we this is this is something uh, we did a we actually did this a, like a month or two back. Uh, I you may or may not know those of you who know me that I am passionate about understanding how everything works. Lauren's on the call who went to engineering school with me. So I have a real engineering brain. I want to look under the hood. I want to understand how things work. I once took a quilting class because, not because I wanted to quilt, but because I wanted to understand and appreciate what was behind the art form. So now I am solely um, on the coaching side and the consulting side. It's all about understanding how the human, right, works, uh, how our subconscious and our conscious creates our reality. And Joel, along with me, um, we teach uh, infinite, poss infinite possibilities. And I believe all of us are on the same page with we believe that there are opportunities always. Would you agree with me, guys? Absolutely. Lucrative opportunities always come your way. Always come our way. So in times like we're seeing now, between the coronavirus and what's going on with Saudi Arabia and, and you know, what the stock market is doing and, and, and where people's portfolios have gone, it is human nature to go to a place of fear. So we have dedicated ourselves to working with people just like you, just like you, on how to preserve and grow your wealth and look at some uh, alternative ways of being in your money. And this alternative way, unfortunately, is about being intentional. Most of the people that are out there in the world rely on others and don't understand how the financial markets work. And in times like these, they're going long because they don't understand anything else but going long. I say they're like ostriches rather than jaguars, right? Their head is in the sand and they're hoping for the best rather than taking intentional action. Do you guys want to say anything about that? No, I completely agree. I mean, you, you have to be you have to be present and you have to be open to new ideas and open to change so that you can, in fact, make money no matter what the different markets are doing. And that is a truism as Don, you know, and Dan may know, I made money in 2008 when I, when the stock market was down 40% financial stocks, which were the only stocks I was managing were down 57. So it is possible. People can make money no matter what the market's doing and there are opportunities all the time. Yeah, so I, so what we're gonna do today is we're, each of us has something to present and then we're going to go to the audience and have them ask questions. And certainly we're gonna invite each of you to reach out to any one of us after this call if you want to have a further discussion. And we're also taping this, so a whole lot more people will see this, and we're excited about that. So uh, this was something I came across yesterday on Mar Market Watch, and um, Paragraph speaks to prudent investors um, should increase their protection of their long-term portfolios. So when I talk to people and ask them, what are they doing to increase their protection of their long-term portfolio? They look at me with a blank stare, right? So this means understanding a variety of ways uh, to do that. Short-term hedges, how are you gonna raise more cash? Diversification, reducing concentration. And then it went on to say that prudent investors should all, prudent investors should also consider taking advantage of short-term trading opportunities. Now I say where there's movement, there's money. And I'll give you an example. Uh, you know, one of the crazy days this week with two trades, I was able to bring in a thousand dollars of income because I I trade the mini. Um, uh, S&P futures. So 
There are always ways to make money in all markets. The key is getting knowledgeable about it and building a new, a new skill. Building a new skill takes time. So this isn't a get rich quick thing. Um, I know, Dan, you're really passionate about that. What, what do you want to say about that? Sure. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. There, there is always opportunity in the markets and you know, there, there are ways to outlay your portfolio via options or via other strategies where you can make money up, up down or sideways. Um, you know, the, the typical, as you put it earlier, investor has two, two options, right? I can go to cash or I can buy more in my, you know, mutual funds, right? We advocate for, I advocate for maybe a different approach. Um, and, and with that, a, a simple option strategy is that you can rotate based on how volatile markets are. And right now, they're, I mean, they're as volatile since I've been trading, uh, you know, in more higher VIX than I've ever seen. Yeah, and the uh, VIX, the volatility the VIX, just for people who are new to all of this, is um, the volatility index. And in the VIX today is, uh, I, I'm just checking where it is right this second, where it's crazy, right? Uh, we're at 52. And just in comparison, on February 19th, I think we were about like at 12 or 13. So the higher this index goes up, how would you describe it, Joel, the VIX? So, so the VIX is basically a measure of the volatility of the stock or a market compared to the overall market. So when the VIX has gone up five times, it means that the, the volatility has gone up 500% compared to where it was just a month ago. And so I remember in 2008, this happened and it was, it was as the volatility of the P&L, the profit and loss that I was making each day went up five times. So it felt like instead of managing $300 million, I was managing $1.5 billion. And this went on for weeks. So, and what happens when this goes on is your managers, the people who are senior at the company, I was working at Citigroup at the time, says, take your exposure down because they don't want the P&L going instead of, you know, half a million to two and a half million every single day. They, they can't stomach that. The company can't stomach it. So what happens is when the VIX goes really high is generally these professional money managers have to take their exposure down, thus giving the individual, the retail investor opportunities because they're acting irrationally. Yeah. So they're acting irrationally. The professionals are acting acting irrationally. Absolutely. I will tell you the swings that we're seeing the last few days is because of those kinds of things that are going on. It's not rational for stocks to move 10% up and then 10% down one day to the next. The value of this company hasn't changed by billions of dollars from one day to the next, right? So the fundamentals are not driving right now. Yeah, the fundamentals are not behind the wheel. Fundamentals are not behind the wheel. I love that. So how to protect yourself against negative influences because in times of chaos, it is very natural for humans to go to humans, us, to go to that crazy place of fear. All of you who know me know that my Bible is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Uh, I, I take clients through the workbook. And if you haven't, done this yet and you want to do it, I encourage you to connect with me because it is, uh, Napoleon Hill was commissioned by Andrew Carnegie 80 plus years ago to interview the top titans in industry and he created a system for creating wealth. So one of the things he talks about is to counter your fears, you must set up new habits. Congratulations to those of you who are on this call because you have a new habit of showing up for yourself in a group of people who want to uh, build trust with you over time. And we're doing this because we care about you and we wanna be with you in this opportunity. So deliberately seek the company of people who influence you to think and act for yourself. 
that's what you're doing. It's called a mastermind. And lastly, see yourself for who you really are. So one of the areas I take clients through is understanding their tendencies because your tendencies are going to dictate how you go about your investing. There isn't a one size fits all strategy here. I'm an ID. That's where I am on the chart. Dan, I think you're around where you're a CD. I was, yeah, I was a CD. I am a CD. Yeah. And Joel, you're an IS with, with significant shading into accuracy. <laughs> significant shading into accuracy. So that I, I love that tendency for you, Joel, because you're this accurate guide in understanding the markets, but you're super supportive and warm as opposed to what most, you know, people in that field are all about. And you really want to get people. I think the biggest problem I've had with brokers, and by the way, I manage my own money. My money is not in the hands of a broker. The biggest problem I've always had with a broker was they were, they were shoving their agenda down my throat as opposed to taking time to really understand what would be right for me. So what's going on in the markets for me right now is I can't be that ostrich and put my head in the sand. You know, I am seeking strategies, active strategies, because here I am, my ID, I need action, action, action. I am seeking action in all of this. So I want for you to really uh, understand where you are with this. Many of you who are on this call may have done it. If you haven't, the optimal version of it is, is what I uh, facilitate and I encourage you to connect with me. So what, what is your style? You could see D's results, bottom line. I is movement, it's excitement. That, that's I'm an ID. Joel, steady stay, stay the course and move in, ex, in excitement, but you're also forensic. And Dan, you're forensic and data-driven and you're a result bottom line. So understanding this is absolutely key. Um, before we go into what it is that each of us are going to just present an idea here today, uh, I want to talk about the nine-year bull run that we've seen. Right. This is this is what the chart of the S and P five hundred looks, looks like, like uh, between two years ago and where we are today. Uh, guys, anything you want to say about this beautiful chart? I mean, we saw what happened at Christmas in two thousand and eighteen, right? With this drop, and and here is where we are today. So we've been up since two thousand and nine. What is it like three hundred percent? The S and P. 500, sort of like that, yeah? That depends where you start from, but yeah, something like that. Something like that. So that was a crazy bull run. And it's, it's kind of abnormal, right? It, it's, well, what, what would you say, Joel, as it relates to the S&P 500? Most. Sorry, say again, you broke up there, Don. Oh, what, comments on the S&P 500 since 2009, what, what would your well if your em environments are very different from day to day week to week month to month and you know in 2009 we were in a financial crisis and you know the bailouts that happened moved risk from companies to the government and the government instituted quantitative easing and moved a lot of debt off company balance sheets onto the government balance sheets and which then started a very strong bull market credit markets improved dramatically and and that created a you know good earnings for large portions of the overall stock market which continued up until you know well you know there there have been many uh, what i call corrections and and you know i was managing money i had my own hedge fund and so i was managing money through a number of them in 2013 through 2016. so everyone says oh it's it's been a constant bull market but i i know you know we've gone down a number of times since 2009 nine percent eight percent seven percent over a very short period of time but this is the first time that it looks like we're actually entering into a bear market. 
Right. So we're close to the S&P 500 being down 20% over a two-week period. So really super crazy. So uh, Dan, anything you want to say about the S&P uh, since 2009? I think, I think we, we're frozen. I, yeah. I we got him frozen. You may want to jump off, Dan, and jump back on. I, we have you frozen there. So um, my, I would just say there's a lot of false security. I think people have false security, right? Since 2009, because it was like, wow, I'm rich. There were, there's so many more uh, what, what we call millionaire 401kers, right? Millionaire 401kers, like false right. security that, wow, I have, I have all this money for my retirement. And then boom, we see this happen. And we have a population of people who only understand how to make money. You know, I'm going to say something maybe off color here. It's like the person that only has sex in the missionary position, right? They're only making money going long, right? And doing the things that they've always done, the plain vanilla way of investing. We are about getting you educated so you see all the different options and how to take advantage of the market like we're seeing today. So yeah, thank you, John. Let me just interrupt because like the false sense of security is really an important um, point to make. And you can be lulled into the fact that you're a great investor because, you know, when the market's going up, all, all ships are, are being raised, right? So it, it, it appears that, oh, I'm, I'm a really smart, intelligent investor by just, as Dan said earlier, you know, people don't really, in most of their accounts, don't have an option. They're either long or the cash, right? They, they either can get longer or go to cash, but they don't have the ability to use these kinds of strategies. And so I think we need to teach them really clearly that these other strategies are the ways to make money in all markets, not just in a bull market. You can make a lot more money in a bull market than just being in, you know, a mutual fund. Yes. Yeah. And, and um, that false sense of security had people just staying the course as opposed to seeking out knowledge that um, will have them becoming financially literate. So we're all about financial literacy. So my idea uh, that I'm presenting today, and we're going to go into this ad in depth. If you want to reach out to any of us, have a call, work with any of us as a mentor, as a coach. So I want to just start off by saying anything we say here today are not ideas for you to go out and do. They're, they're just examples of how various strategies work. And I know Dan's going to put something on the screen with that disclosure. We want to be very clear. I just want to work through an example, uh, which is a covered call example. And if any of you are interested, uh, you know, there are books out there. There's a free uh, book that you can get for Kindle Unlimited called Cover Calls Made Easy. And I really believe that People like you and I should understand this strategy because it allows you to turn up the rate of return on your portfolio and protect yourself. So here's a Coca-Cola uh, example. I buy a thousand shares of Coke today, Joel, it's at 5233. Uh, and in addition to purchasing Coca-Cola, uh, I'm also looking at the April 17th contract the option call contract and the strike at $55. So I can sell that call for $1.11 today, okay? And uh, I sell that, uh, I, I can sell 10 call options. And when you understand the options, we're gonna go into you know what this all means. This isn't a, a deep dive lesson here, but I just want you to understand that your account will be immediately credited the $1,110 that you will receive by selling those 10 call options. And you get to keep that no matter what. I think that's a pretty amazing opportunity, right? So what are the three things that can happen in this scenario? Number one, by April 17th or on April 17th, maybe Coke closes above 55. Best case scenario. 
I get those uh, shares called away from me. I make a profit because I bought Coke at 52.33 and they get taken away from me at 55. So that's 37.70. And then, um, you know, 37.70 is not only the 20, um, the $2.65 uh, I make on that transaction, but also the 1110 that I get to uh, keep because I'm selling the call. So that gives me an opportunity to make 7.2%, which, which would be a whole lot more than I would have made if Coke went from 52.33 to 55. Of course, some people may say, well, what if it went up to 56 or 57? Just buy some more, buy some more, because over time, you're going to see if this strategy works out for you. So if Coke stays at 52.33, instead of just being sideways, you get to keep that 11.10 and you make 2.1% just by Coke staying steady. If Coke closes below 52.30, you may be in a position where you might, might wanna buy more Coke using the 11.10 that you received as a credit. So that's covered calls, very high level. This is something where we go into, you know, for an hour or two in our workshops that we do. Uh, Dan, I, you know, you're a, a big options guy and, and Joel, you understand this strategy. Anything you want to say about this uh, that I missed here in just presenting it? I'll just say that um, just quickly before Dan goes, the returns you're showing are one month returns. So an annualized, that's yeah. So an annualized return for Coke closing above 55 is 86% annualized. That that's an awesome, awesome return, right? The and if the it just goes sideways, you're making over 24%, you know, annualized. So like you continue to do this, you can do this every 30 days, and you can generate massive returns as well. Yeah, and that's that's. And, and when we when we talk about when we talk about you know profiting in any market. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't this be a perfect way to consistently drive profit in a sideways market? A sideways Realistically, market. Realistically, enjoy a comment on this too. After the magnitude of the bull run that we've had, it's very likely that the market just kind of needs to off a bit. Now, the way it's cooling off is. You know, Dan, you're kind of going in and out. I think, Dan, I'm going to have For example, this okay. is an easy go. drive extra, extra revenue over normal portfolio. Uh, can you guys still hear me? I saw video stuff. Um, I, no, no, I can hear you, but you're kind of garbled. Yeah. So I Sorry, yeah, it's off. breaking up. Um, I turned off your video. Yeah. And it's because I have TD running in the background and it just sucks all the bandwidth out of my computer. Okay. Oh. Yeah, going without the video might be better. Yeah, I just took yeah, your Okay, video. that's fine. So, so, so what, what's great about something like Coke, uh, Coke even in these volatile markets, it kind of goes, it, it's been pretty steady. But you were saying something, what were you saying? I just wanted to uh, wrap that up before I hand everything over to you. Perfect strategy for a sideways market. Perfect strategy for a sideways market, yeah, cool. So I'm going to do my stop share here. And Dan, we're gonna have you take over and share your screen. Let me pause. Okay. We've got that going. There you go. You're sharing your screen, okay. Bring my condor here. Let me just minimize this real quickly. You know what? My Google dropped. Give me, give me a minute here to get set up, Don. Why don't, why don't you? you um, well, I'm going to just. Why don't you carry on and, and comment yeah, a little? I'm, I'm going to hand it over to Joel, maybe, and then Joel, you can get started with what what you want to speak yeah, about. And Joel, why don't we? Why don't we ad hoc it, Joel? Why don't we you had in first my gmail just crashed okay. i'll get organized and then i'll back in when, when you're done yeah Sound good? yeah we're gonna um i'm gonna hand it over to joel to share 
Okay. Um, can I share my screen? Yeah. Just go on. The, um, go go to the bottom and share your screen. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So I wanted to go through a very quick example of um, you know we talked a few weeks ago about my five step stock screen, and what's interesting is that you can do my five step stock screen for any stock, and you can find stocks that you believe are gonna make a lot of money for you if the market goes up or if the stock goes up, but you could also find companies that will underperform or go down no matter what the stock market's doing. So that's the point of my five-step stock screen. And so this company, uh, one of my clients found uh, last week actually. Um, and so I'll just gonna quickly go through the five-step stock screen showing the numbers here. And this is uh, Occidental Petroleum. So the last quarter, what we do for the first step is we check how much the company earned this quarter compared to the quarter last year. And this fourth quarter, 2019, the last quarter that they reported their earnings, they lost $1.50. Four quarters ago in December, 2018, they made money. They made 93 cents. Okay, so that's big. That's a big loss. So what we're looking for in a short is companies that are earnings going down or companies that lose money. So this company lost a lot of money in the fourth quarter, $1.50 per share compared to making money. So the second step is to see how much the revenues went up or down. And the second step of my stock screen is we're looking for companies, if it's a long, companies that are growing their sales at least 5%. So Occidental Petroleum, their revenues went from 4534, so 4.5 billion, and basically didn't move, 4.5 billion. Now, if you're looking for a long, you want companies that are growing. So this company's not growing. The revenues went up, were basically flat. But what's interesting, so step two, it fails step two, which means that it's, again, a good short opportunity. Step three is to see if step one is greater than step two. In this case, step one, it went down a lot. So step one was, does the earnings per share, it was actually negative, right? Negative growth. So step three, again, it looks like it's a really good opportunity for short. So it, it failed step one step two and step three. So now we want to compare it. Step four is how did the earnings growth compare to the PE of the company? So we saw now here you have a negative earnings growth. So for a long, you want to find companies where earnings are growing faster than the PE. Well, here we already know that earnings are negative. So we don't have to look at the PE, but we can look at the PE here. Um, the PE at the end of 2019 was 25 and they're losing money. So that's really bad. And then step five is to say, okay, what did the company do when they reported those earnings? So here's the earnings date for Occidental Petroleum is February 28th. So we look at the price history and on February 28th, it's interesting if you look at five days before investors were selling, selling, selling this company. And then on the day of earnings, it actually went up a little bit. But here we see that people in the know were getting out of the stock in droves for many days. So it, if you look from $43 all the way down to 31, and it went up a little bit on the day of earnings. So this is a really good candidate for short, if you looked at all that information. And then you see, on Monday, the stock went down 50%. Wow. After going down 14% on Friday, and it's down another 15% today. This is a perfect example where you can make money in down markets. Companies that fail my stock screen on all five steps are the best Kansas. This candidate, this company failed on four of the five, still a very good opportunity to short. And basically, for those who you who haven't short, it's the exact opposite of a long. All you're doing is betting that the stock's going to go down. 
So short is very simple. You're selling it first and buying it back later. So instead of like normally when you buy, you buy first and sell it last, here you're selling first. So even last Friday, you could have sold it at $26 at the close and you would have made more almost 60% in just three trading days. Right. That, and I work with Joel, this screener process is, is amazing. He's looking at FactSet uh, is a tool that you use, but there's Yahoo and others. And certainly if you want to go deeper with this, I'm gonna give you Joel's email at the end of the session. And he would love to have you join him for a call and get an understanding of this. And again, this is a way to do intentional investing. And during times of volatility, like we're seeing right now, we have some short-term opportunities, right? To grow a lot of money and to make a lot of money. Yeah. Skill, specialized knowledge, mentorship, mastermind. If you don't, I say Joel and Dan that trading and investing is a team sport. Trading and investing is a team sport. Absolutely. So here we are, your, your, your team here. So Dan, are you sure, back? Let's give it another, yeah, let's give it another try here. Thank you for sharing that with us, Joel. That, that's, that process is brilliant. Brilliant. And it's what very great simple. It's, it's in, by the way, it's in my uh, bestseller of the Nine Money Rules Millionaire Shoes um, on 152 and 153. So, what, page 152 and 153. Go to Amazon. Um, but we're going to get you connected with y'all. Okay, Mr. Dan, rock and roll. Fantastic. Hopefully, this, hopefully we can get through this without my uh, anything crashing uh, this time. But uh, uh, thank you, Don. Uh, thank you, Joel, for you know talking about those those different aspects of the market. I'm going to show uh, everyone a little bit about options. I don't know what everybody's base knowledge are of equity options, so I'm going to try and start from the most basic point possible. Okay. So we're going to go through this. Today's brief lecture will be the basics of puts and calls reading a profit graph in TD Ameritrade. I recommend TD Ameritrade. It's what I teach off of. Um, they have a great uh, platform called Think or Swim. Uh, you can download it for free. Great for learning. You can paper trade. And then when you're you know, ready, you, you would essentially fund that same account and move on to actual trading. Yeah. After that, we're going to go into a introduction of the Greeks. Uh, you've probably heard about the Greeks. We're not going to cover all of them. We're just going to cover the three uh, sort of big ones that we'd like to look at when entering uh, an option strategy. And then we're going to bring it all together and quickly build what's called an iron condor. Uh, different option strategies have different names um, and it helps in, in the learning process to uh, sort of identify. It's almost like we're going to be building shapes and these shapes are all called something different. There's iron condors, there's butterflies, there's strangles and straddles and so on and so forth. And then, but we're just gonna take on the iron condor because it really wraps up the entire lesson of buying a put, selling a put, buying a call, selling a call. And people really like to make options very, very complicated, but at the end of the day, there's only four actions you can ever take in options trading, and, and it's those four. You have puts and you have calls, and you can either buy them or sell them. And they all create different um, sort of market outlooks, if you will. And what we do uh, in our methods are combine these four things, sometimes not all four, but we'll combine these four sort of techniques, these four different things you can do in different ways and combinations, and that's what creates the different shapes and captures profit in different areas of, of market movement. This is our legal slide. Um, again, I'm going to hop into the tool and actually build an iron condor for you. This is not a trade recommendation. I am not a financial advisor, broker. Uh, in the past, I've, I've ran hedge funds, but I'm sticking to the personal trading, mentoring game now. I do not say take this trade, don't take this trade. I give you the tools. You can discuss things with me, absolutely, but not now or ever in the course of a mentorship will I say take this trade now. So we're good with that. So moving on, 
this looks wacky, right? Why don't I, why don't I get into the app and, and show you what, what I mean here? But moving from the top left corner clockwise around, I'm going to cover these, these four different positions that we can take in the options market. A long call, then a long put, then a short put, and a short call. And then I'll explain why we, we don't do some of these things on their own. And by the way, but most I, simply, I uh, a, a long quick? call. Sure, anytime. One of the ways, so these words, call and put, are very confusing to some people when they first get familiarized with options. One of the ways that I remember the areas, so the call's up here and the, the put is down here. So I always think of put down the phone. We put down the phone and that just has me understanding where they're at when you know when your brain first gets familiarized with this sometimes it's confusing sure yeah no, absolutely i mean pick up you know pick up the phone to make the call put down the phone right so calls pick up the phone if you were to buy a call you would profit in an upward price movement okay um you would pay a premium for the call and you would make profitability beyond that point at expiry. Um, so for example, if I'm holding Coke and I think it's gonna go up, I could buy a call above where the current price is. And if price goes up above that point, that, that would be how you would profit on that trade. If it does not go above that point, you pay the premium for the call, you don't get anything for it. Now this, that's the exact opposite of what Don was showing, right? And Don was showing cover calls, um, which is a great way to profit in a sideways market and even, even in a, a small upwards market. And it also helps your, your downside because it's gonna nerve uh, the fall and call, you want price to go is the opposite. Buying a put is an insurance play. If you're holding, uh, say you're holding a lot of the S SPY in your portfolio and the SPY is just tanked, however much more tanked today, another 100 points or so. Another 10 points in the SPY, my mistake. A buying a put would be an insurance policy saying, okay, I'm gonna cap my losses at a certain point below the market. So I think that I had my market screener open for a second here, probably what was causing everything to crash. But so the, the, the ES or the, the put, the uh, use the SPY. The SPY is at roughly 278 right now. The SPY is the uh, S&P 500, basically the large cap index for the US. But the buying a put, you would pick a point underneath the market, say at, if it's at 277, you say 275, that's, the most I'm willing to go down in my portfolio, you'd buy a put at 275, and if prices fell below that, you could still sell at 275. So a call is the right to buy, a put is the right to sell, right? Now look at these bottom two. In, in buying a put or buying a call, you have a fixed, investment that you're making with an unlimited upside potential. Okay. In selling a call or selling a put. Dan, you're 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 going your like the opposite. You collect premium up front. You're essentially sure Okay, you're insuring upside on a. I, I apologize. I'll, I'll have this figured out for next time, but yeah, uh, there's something going off my router. Um, voyage. <laughs> uh, either way, so if you were to just sell a put or a call, that would be called going naked. Okay. And uh, something that I will be a big proponent of is that you never, ever go naked in the markets, ever because all it takes is one bad swing one way and your account 
is, ob is obliterated. You know, there, there's plenty, plenty of YouTube channels about geniuses over the last nine years, and all they did was sell puts. Well, their accounts are probably at zero right now if they kept that strategy through the last two weeks. So we're going to go away to combine these four things. And again, this is just one example where we're going to limit our risk. We're going to take advantage of how scared the market is and use that to generate a very nice little profit over the next couple months. And, then, and this is a way that, you know, I've, I've, I've been coaching students of mine to, you know, earn back that 15, 20% that they might be down right now. So let me open up T. Can you guys see this okay? I'm gonna ignore these. Um, I, yeah, we see, we see the TD Ameritrade screen, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so TD Ameritrade. When we're buying and selling puts, I'm gonna choose an expiry at the, uh, we'll call it the quarterlies at the end of June. So we're gonna build a position and we're gonna take advantage of all of this scaredness, right, in the market. And remember, when we, when we are looking to be a net seller of insurance in the market, we like that volatility is very high. You know, Joel was talking about the uh, imbalance or the Im irrationality of, of a lot of work. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's human nature to overreact, absolutely. And so what we wanna do, if you can imagine selling insurance, we're selling flood insurance during a flood. So we can get a lot of money for it. And we can have our range of profitability much, much, much wider than usual. Because yeah, that's again, the, the markets are going up 5% a day. They're going down 7% a day. Like that used to be like a, a year. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've never, Dan, this is a let's, very- like, Let's be real here. I mean, like if you, you go like pre, you know, plus a year. Yeah, absolutely. This is, it's a very interesting time. So, so let's, let's do this. Let's try and do this very as slowly as possible here. I'm going to move your beautiful faces to the bottom so I can do this. And again, I'm not going into a lot of detail here. But in this example, we are going to sell a put at 2175. We're going to buy a put at 2170. That position that I just created is called a vertical. Okay. So, and it's not pricing correctly. Why don't I just use an actual example that I gave a, a student a while ago that we talked about. So we're gonna sell a put at 25.20. We're gonna buy a put at 25.15, okay? This gives us a vertical here one contract, we're going to have to have $400 in our account to facilitate this trade, and we're going to profit $95 on the trade. On the other end of the trade, we are going to buy a call and sell a call. This gives us a nice flat shape in the middle. And that shape is the condor. And again, this shape is called an iron condor. You know, we go, this is, you know, it takes advantage of, it shows all four legs. You see, we, we have, we've sold a call, bought a call, we've sold a put, we've bought a put, and it gives us a nice flat shape. I'm going to move these around a little bit. And again, there's a science to this. I'm just doing it very quickly.
And I will explain. So what we're saying is we believe there's a high probability based on what the Greeks are telling us that by expiry, price will stay in a particular range. And that's, and that's right. the insurance policy. So people are protecting themselves. Um, on yeah, both so what, it, you're exactly right, Don. I just wanted to make that so it was much more flat in the middle. I apologize. I can't, you know, chew gum and, and walk at the same time. It's one thing at a time for me. But <laughs> the, the idea, right, is that we select a zone that we're going to insure, insure. And in this case, the market for the SPX is currently sitting at 27.72, okay? Now, what we're gonna say is, and we're gonna collect full profitability as long as, in this example, the market stays between 23.87, call it 23.90, and 31.30, okay? So now looking at a chart, Oh, you still have that. See how crazy it's been in the last little while. Looking at a chart, That's we want the price action, right? to stay between, what do we say, 31.30 and 25. Mm -hmm. To call it 2,400, okay? 2,400, way the heck down here, 2,400, right? And as long as yeah, price you, stays in that range to the end of March. a daily yeah. chart? And, and you've seen the magnitude of the moves we've had lately, right? So that's why we get to benefit from such a big wide zone here. The zone is 600 plus points wide. So as long as the price stays within this range, we're gonna gain, get full profitability on this trade. Now, what does full profitability on this trade mean? So it means that for every $855 we put up on this trade, we'll make $145 right, by the, end of, by the end of March, in this case. And that's uh, looking at 145. Now that represents a 16.9% return, okay? So this is a, a very uh, short-term play in, in my book. So, you know, end of March, you know, really is two, three weeks away. Um, but you can do these every month, right? This is a way to generate cash flow again from look a small portion of your overall portfolio, right? You're not going to outlay your whole portfolio on a play like this because it's much higher risk than just like buying a stock or doing a covered call strategy. This is a, an alpha driver, alpha being profitability over the general market for say 10 to 20% of your portfolio. Okay. And it's just one of many plays that, you know, I would cover with, with students that I coach, you know, Don, we, we've worked together for a while uh, and we've covered everything under the sun, I think. Almost. Yeah, because we, as we exactly. work together, there is. we saw different markets. Yeah. Right? Exactly. If what, what worked in 2016 didn't work in 2017, what worked in 2017 didn't really work in 2018. And then in 2019, it, we're going uh, in 2020, it's just a whole new game altogether. So different strategies, different, think of it as playing chess, right? You have your different openings and then you have to adapt to what your opponent is giving you. In this case, your opponent is the market. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so um, what I'm gonna do right now is just to give everybody a sense. Thank you so much, Dan. That, yeah, that sure. was very, uh, very straightforward and very clear. And certainly if people wanna Ooh. understand more about options, oops. Let me just pull up this slide here. Slide, slide show from current. I want for you all as a call to action, if this is something that you're really interested in understanding 
more financial literacy, mastermind, mentoring, intentional investing, I welcome you, as you're feeling here today, to reach out to any of us. Our, our emails are there on the screen. Uh, we're, um, we're going to be gathering uh, regularly and uh, even have a little bit more discussion with those of you who are on, but I just wanted you to reach out to me if you are interested in understanding what makes you tick and you know, know Socrates, know thyself, right? So many people don't understand themselves so they get in their own way and they're indecisive, which leads to struggle. When you understand yourself, you then can make the decisions that have you being successful. So I do a lot of work with mindset. I'm uh, a certified hypnotherapist and a theta healer, as well as a business development and business growth professional coach, mentor, advisor. Uh, I work with my clients to create their five-year plan. What is your wealth plan? What is your life plan? What is your career plan? And what are the projects you're going to commit to? And how are you going to tax, tax, from a tactics perspective, move forward towards that which you desire? And if you don't have a burning desire, you're going to be in neutral for the rest of your life. So that's what I work with clients on. Uh, Dan, uh, here's your email. How would you, uh, I, I have some words on there, but call you um, or reach out to you over email um, and, and describe to everybody, everybody how you mentor your clients. Typically what, what I'll do with, with new, new clients, we do a first, we do an assessment of where, where you are in your general options knowledge. Um, from that, we'll design a custom course. I mean, I typically will start students on sort of like a beginner intermediate course where we're going to learn all the different, you know, three or four different plays for different volatility environments. Um, and then, you know, up, up to them ongoing, you know, a lot of clients I have, we have an ongoing relationship where we meet every week or two. Um, you know, it's really just to play it by ear. We, we, we assess where we're at, what we want to learn. Um, and then it's just checking in. Hey, how's, how's this trade? What, what do I do here? A lot, a lot, what I found with options, at least when I was learning it, it just really helped to have somebody to call because you have all these questions, you know, and, and even if the question is as simple as like, hey, can you just double check this and make sure that I'm entering it correctly? Like I want to do, a, I want this to be a condor. Does this look right? Because it's kind of daunting, right? There's a lot of different things you can click on. Um, and and that, that's, that's really how, how I run that, that relationship with new clients. Yeah, and, and what I heard from you, it's a customizable plan. So what clients tend to do is work with me to create that plan and then take that plan to Dan, take that plan to exactly. Joel. Yep. And Joel, uh, what, how would you speak about what it is that you do? And I want everybody to understand too, I, I work, I continue to work with Joel and Dan and you guys are amazing mentors and have given me such confidence as it relates to my ability the profit. Yeah, so I teach people not only about the stock market, you know, I also in my book, The Nine Money Rules Billionaires Use, I talk about real estate as well. So I go wherever the client is interested in, as, as you talk about Dawn early on, you know, I'm supporting the individual. And the reason I'm doing this is I went to a course where a guy stood up on stage and basically had a one size fit all plan for all 200 people in the room, which as you said, you need to know the person, you need to know what makes you tick. So understanding your money mindset, I have a financial freedom survey people fill out before I take them on as clients and they have to be open-minded, they have to be willing to change. I'm a certified infinite possibilities trainer as well as trailblazer. And I am also, as I mentioned earlier, former hedge fund manager during 2008. I was managing 300 million up to 700 million in 2011. And, you know, I've, my, my career has been actuary, credit analyst, equity analyst, portfolio manager, and now prosperity coach. And so I teach, you know, a prosperity plan so that you can get to financial freedom quicker 
you know, everyone is going to be financially free. The question is how quick can it happen? And hopefully it happens in this lifetime. So I teach how to get into financial freedom using my five step stock screen, but there's many different ways, right? It could be real estate. It could be currencies or commodities. What's your passion? What are you interested in? That's where we go. I'm also a, a chartered financial analyst as well. Great. So I, um, again, just jot those Joel at S A L A U R M O R.com. And then Dan and I under the options for wealth, uh, brand. I am going to just look in the, we had Lauren that said uh, she had to go and thank you for everyone. Uh, Carolyn and others, anything you want to type into the chat box. More importantly, this is uh, recorded. So many people will connect with this and this was our maiden voyage of doing this, and I'm so excited about showing up in a big way on a weekly basis, and uh, thank you all for your energy, your passion, and presenting the options for wealth. Okay, bye now. Thanks, Don. Talk to you again soon.